Morning. Welcome to another Sunday School Short. We're in Proverbs today, man. I am so excited about Proverbs. It's probably one of my favorite books of the Bible. Easy to read, easy to grasp some understanding and wisdom and knowledge. Solomon wrote most of these. If an apple a day keeps the doctor away, we can kind of correlate that into a proverb a day keeps the devil away. There's 31 of them. Pick one a day. Today we're in Proverbs 1 through 3. Chapter 1, Proverbs 1. This is so rich. Don't just take my small synopsis. Get into all the Proverbs. I can't hit everything. This is just a small synopsis of my daily Bible reading. Proverbs 1. It tells us exactly who wrote it in verse 1. Solomon, uh, son of King David, king of Israel. It goes on to talk about the purpose of the writing. And the purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline. And we sometimes hate discipline, but it is so much better than the consequences that we have to deal with with some of our choices. Verse 5, let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. That's good stuff. Verse 7, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. And this fear isn't an afraid of God, just arbitrarily being afraid of God, but just like my earthly father, I felt loved. Um, but if I did something I wasn't supposed to be doing, there was fear involved because of those consequences we talked about earlier. The first part of eight, listen to your father uh, when he corrects you. And it goes on to talk about the mother. But this is also just any authority figure in your life, whether it be if you're outside of your father or mother's home, there's still authority figures in your life, your boss, the law enforcement, things like that. Verse 10, if enticed by sinners, turn your back to that type of thing. And it talks about peer pressure and the peer pressure to do bad things. And, oh, nobody ever figured out. Nobody ever know. Yes, they will. God knows. You know. Uh, verse 15, don't go along with them, it tells us. And uh, wisdom shouts in the streets, verse 20. And this isn't Solomon, uh, his own personal wisdom. No, this is the mind of God revealed to us through his word. So wisdom shouts out to us, the last part of 22, how long will you fools hate knowledge? It's saying uh, it's readily available. Wisdom's readily available to everyone. And 23, come listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. This is God speaking wisdom, speaking the mind of God revealed. Come listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you. Awesome and um, make you wise. And it goes on to talk about um, when we reject uh, those shouts out, those calls, those offerings of wisdom and chase our own desires. In verse 28, when you cry out for, for help, I will not answer. And 30 and 31, they paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat, listen to this, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way. And when we reject wisdom and understanding and godly knowledge, we sometimes have to eat the bitter fruit of living our own way. Ends in 33, but all those who listen to me will live in peace. Verbs 2, chapter 2 here talks about the benefits of wisdom. And uh, verse 3, cry out for insight and ask for understanding. See, Solomon himself, who was uh, world-renowned for his wisdom, looked at possibly the wisest man who ever lived. He himself, when God offered him anything, ask and I'll give it to you, he asked for wisdom on how to lead his country, the, the country of Israel. Uh, that's how important wisdom is. Verse 4, search for them, that being insight and understanding, as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure. You know, when we lose our iPhone, we flip out and we turn over everything, searching desperately. And an iPhone isn't even that big of a treasure. But think of how valuable insight and understanding can be to our lives. And we should seek it out like that. For God grants wisdom. Amen. Verse 6. Verse 7. He grants a treasure of common sense, which isn't so common, we know from the world we live in, common sense isn't so common. Uh, he grants the treasure of common sense to the honest. Verse 11, wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. And that's indeed the truth. Verse 16, wisdom will save you from an immoral woman. And I don't think God's mad at us if we interchange that and say an immoral man. 
and it ends talking about the destruction that follows breaking our marriage vows and, and that type of wording. And just a side note here, vows don't have anything to do with feeling. Uh, love is commitment. It isn't how you feel at that exact moment. I'm committed to my wife. I love her because of the vow I placed before her and God. And we should do the same. When we're feeling desperate, when we're hearing somebody in our ear saying, oh, you ought to just leave him, that type of word, we need to go back to our vows and go back to our commitment before God and our spouse. Verse 3, chapter 3, uh, verses 1 and 2, Solomon here is talking, Never forget what I taught you, talking to his son or younger people. And if you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. I love this here. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Verse 3, and 4, Then you will find favor with both God and people. That is so cool. Loyalty and kindness. See, even if somebody's ugly to you, I've always said, you can say be nice as loud as you need to and with the appropriate tone that you need to without calling somebody a name or without, you can, your response can be be nice and you can say it as loud and as ugly as you need to, um, but don't let them trip you up. Allow kindness uh, to never leave you. Memory verse here today, verse 5, and I told you Proverbs was good. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not or depend not on your own understanding. Essentially, who cares what I think? Who cares what you think? But what does God think? What does God say? And verse 6, seek his will in all you do and he will show you the right path. That's good stuff. So seek his will, not, not your own will, not your own desires or needs or whatever. Seek God's will, and he'll show you the right path. Uh, honor the Lord with your wealth and the best of everything you produce. See, we're biblically called to tithe, and that's 10% of your income to your local church. It's your first fruits. Even if you give 10% when everything's left over, it's not a tithe. It's not a true tithe unless you do it from your first fruits. Verse 11 and 12 says something like this. Don't reject the Lord's discipline. He corrects those he loves. And then speaking of wisdom here in verse 16, she offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. Verse 19, by wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. Uh, 21, don't lose sight of common sense. Again, we've already said that's not so common in the world we've ever lived in or in human nature to begin with. Don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Verse 24, you can go to bed uh, without fear, keeping common sense and discernment. You can go to bed without fear and lie down and sleep soundly. How many of us lie down and our minds are just racing from anxiety, uh, fear of our present position now or a future or whatever? Uh, verse 26, the Lord is your security. When we're in that situation, we just have to remind ourselves that the Lord is our security. He's going to take care of me. He's looking out for me. He wants the best for me. Verse 27, don't withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. And that's hard to do because sometimes we want to say, oh, if I give this person this, what are they going to do? We, we want to micromanage our own mind and sit here and run through scenarios and stuff. No, if it's in your uh, ability to help, do that. Don't judge. Help. Uh, and it ends talking about help your neighbor. Uh, and that's not just the guy next door to you. Don't envy evil people and the way God looks at evil versus the godly or wicked versus the godly people. If this has been a blessing to you, like, subscribe, and share by clicking on my family portrait there. And share this with uh, your friends. Uh, if you need a daily devo, this isn't just a uh, exhaustive Bible study by no means. Get in God's Word. Proverbs are great. They, they, you read those year-round. Every Today, I think, is the 13th or 14th. You read Proverbs 13 or 14 as well. God bless you.